An incredibly important feature to know in ZBrush is masking. To start masking, all you do is press and hold control on your keyboard and click and drag on your model, like this. You'll notice that we are painting it dark, but wait, we're actually not. The darkness is just a visual representation of the areas that are masked or frozen. What masking does is that it allows us to edit anything that is outside of the mask, but it protects the area that is masked. I'm going to grab my standard brush and try drawing on my masked area. I simply cannot, no matter how hard I try. But if I try to edit the area outside of the mask, you'll notice that it's completely editable. You can even use mask very cool effects. For example, if I draw a little heart on here and I try to edit around it, maybe I'll get a very clean outline of the hearts. So we've talked about how to lay down a mask. But what about doing anything to this mask? First, we need to know how to invert the mask. All you have to do to invert the mask is press and hold control on your keyboard and then click one time on the canvas or documents outside of your model. And that will invert the mask and allow you to just edit that part. To clear the mask, all you have to do is hold down control and drag outside on your canvas, like so. There are a few more interesting things you can do to your mask. So let's put one down. And we can go to masking in the tool palette. You can sharpen your mask to make it simply sharper. Or you can blur it by clicking the blur button. The shortcut for blurring your mask is control and click one time inside of your model. You can also grow your mask, boost it by making it darker, shrink it, and dilute it to make it softer. There are multiple types of masking brushes. The default masking brush is the mask pen that allows you to draw on your model the mask. And if you start masking from outside of your model, it creates a rectangular marquee for your mask, like that. If you press down control and go to the brush options here, you'll find a ton of other default masking brushes that are very interesting. For example, mask circle is an option and it creates a perfect circle. Mask lasso, which is one of my favorites that allows you to do a perfect lasso so that you get exactly the shape you want. Next, we have selection. What selection allows you to do is select a part of your model that will be shown while the rest is hidden, like so. This makes your mesh a lot easier to work with, especially in difficult areas like armpits and just tight crevices. To create a selection, hold down Ctrl and Shift on your keyboard and drag out to make a selection, like so. To invert your selection, simply press down Ctrl and Shift on your keyboard and click on your model one time. To clear your selection, simply press Ctrl and Shift and click outside of the model onto your canvas. Just as with the masking brush, there are a lot of different brushes that you can select for your selection brush. Press down Ctrl and Shift and go to the brush panel and you will see a ton of new ones being shown. For example, we have the Select Lasso, which allows you to select in a very precise manner. So if you just want to grab, for example, the ear so that you can work on it, so you can come in here and work on your selection. You can do multiple selections and you'll start refining it and making it smaller, like so. Here's a pro tip. If you're using one of the masking brushes, you might notice that it has a pass through effect on your mesh. So if you try to select just the front, you'll also select the back. To avoid this, you can combine selection and masking. I'm going to select just the front of my model, like so, and then I'll mask the area I want. Clear my selection and look at that. Nothing in the back has been selected.